Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Moonlit and Polished. Hi, so in today's episode, this is probably going to be a big jumble of stuff. I have all these little things that I want to do and show you guys and talk to you about, and then I just don't think that they'll be good enough for a whole video, especially because they're going to be like, here's a minute long video. We just waste your time with that. So I kind of just wanted to heap it all in together. <laughs> Uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about today is repackaging products that I like, but I hate their packaging. I know this happens to a lot of people where you guys will get a product and either it's too hard to open, or the sprayer isn't misty enough, or you know, what have you. My problem is for a few things I have, but Really, the big issue is that the products are things I like, and they're brands I like, and they're a price point I like, but unfortunately, because of the packaging, I tend to either not buy it again, or just forget about it, and then go for a pricier option, which is stupid, because you can still save money and have it be the way you want. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys that with a couple things. The first one I was gonna show you guys is super simple and like super easy. I actually buy these face wipes at Walmart. I don't buy expensive face wipes because let's face it, they're just wipes for your face. Uh, these are the Equate Quality Guaranteed Exfoliating Wet Cleansing Towelettes with Cucumber, Aloe, and green tea, uh, da, 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 60 wet towelettes, paraben free. Okay, so I have had the experience, even with really, not really, really expensive brands, but more expensive brands, that these packagings with this like plastic thing, which is meant to keep it nice and sealed and wet still, doesn't work. So many times I have bought stuff, and it doesn't matter what price it is, because I bought it in several different prices, and it has this thing on here, and after like a couple of days, like the it's just evaporated, you know? And I live in Florida, so if it's a heat thing, it needs to be more sealed or better or whatever. I'm not sure what the terms are for it because it's not like I'm an expert in wet wipe packaging. So what I decided to do was I found this little baby online. I found this on Amazon.com. It came in a set of two, one that had polka dots and one that had these little I don't know what they're called. <laughs> it's called the Booty Pod. And it is a vinyl plastic bag with like a little zipper. And so what I've done is um, I've taken one for my face wipes and one for, you know, my lady wipes that also gets dried out and they, they usually come in this type of packaging as well. So I have one in my bathroom with my lady wipes and I have one here for my face with my face wipes and it keeps them moist, it keeps them dry. I don't have to worry about them drying out as long as I remember to close it because occasionally I do forget to do that. And that's on me. But if I remember, like even if I leave it open, it's still like letting less out. And you can even see like, not right now, but sometimes you can see the moisture gathering on the inside of the plastic, which is better than it coming out. So that's one tip that I have. So if you guys have a face wipe that you like, but you don't buy it because the packaging dries out, then this is a good way to keep using the one that you like that's more affordable or more expensive, whatever you guys want. And because sometimes you really just want to maintain your, what is that word? Your investment. Like if you spend a lot of money on some wipes and those freaking things dry out, like it just makes you want to light your house on fire, you know? So just put them in here and they will stay nice and moist. So that's one. The next thing is, I've just recently purchased the set of All Star by ColourPop, their face setting spray and their primer. I tried this primer already and I have to say I love the way it feels. It's It looks thin and it runs a little thin, but when you put it on it feels tacky but not like sticky, 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 like sometimes like you're rubbing glue on your face. And I really liked this primer a lot. However, I don't like the packaging for the primer itself. And that's not something that like I have a problem with with all other kinds of primers. I have several different primers that come in like a tube like this that I actually really do like. It's just that the primer itself is almost too thin for this packaging. 
when I open it, like if I squeeze, like I barely squeezed it and this bit came out. And if I laid it down on the counter on its side, like it eventually kind of starts to drip out. Not that you know you shouldn't cover your primer immediately after you're done using it, but just it's a little difficult because if I squeeze too hard by accident, I get a bunch of excess product and it's hard to get it back in and it's just a huge pain. So the solution I have for that is um, actually a while ago, I bought an airless vacuum pump and I bought that from Amazon and I bought it for foundation, which I've already used up and now the pump is kind of just like empty and not in use. And so it's this one right here. I'm not putting it in all the way because I don't want to uh, close it just yet. And it has this little top here and a vacuum, airless vacuum pump basically has like this little thing in here. It doesn't have a straw like most sprayers and pumps do. What it uses is it uses suction so that this little guy, when you're pumping it, pulls up and gets out all of the product and it kind of works like a squeegee on the side so it kind of like brings everything up so that not only do you know you're getting all of the product out of the container it's also like you don't have a straw that's full that you have to like try and pick out at the end you know it's it's good and so um, it has like the space inside and I actually actually kind of broke mine but on purpose because this thing doesn't quite come out I tried to pull it out and it wouldn't come out so like it kind of broke here but that's fine because it's still gonna like sit in there nicely when I put it in and I want to actually take the primer put it in the tube and then cut the container open and put it in here so I can still have the label so that is what I'm going to do today with that and then we will move on to sprayers because that's a whole other thing all right let's get started so as I said I used to use this for my foundation this is a little hole that it has on the bottom and if you put a pin through it you can push the stopper up and down and move it around whatever you need. This is the All Star Primer by Colourpop and now I'm just going to pop it open as you can see some's coming out already and I'm going to just fill up the bottle. I am really excited for being able to put this primer into a better container now that if I ever do get a chance to or I don't find a different primer and I decide to buy this one again, I can just continually put it into this container. Now that I've squeezed all I can squeeze out with my hands, I'm cutting off the top of the bottle and I want to see how much is left over inside of this. I mean, I don't know if this happens to you guys sometimes after I have a product that I really liked and I try to squeeze all of it out. I am that cheap person who will cut open a package just to get the last dregs of whatever's left. Listen, I paid for it. I want to use it. I have a little razor blade here that I'm using to cut open the bottle. Be careful. Probably don't use a razor blade if you don't have to. I ended up cutting myself. Just, you know, guys, half the things I do, you shouldn't do. As you can see, there is plenty of primer left in this tube. I'm using the little silicone tool that I use for my nail art. I went ahead and I washed it with antibacterial hand soap and then I wiped it down with a cotton pad and some alcohol just to be sure that it was clean so that the product inside would remain sanitary. And now I have cut open and cleaned out the last of the remaining product. What I'm doing now is I'm evening out the line on top so that it can fit into the bottle and I'm also going to cut the bottom portion off as well because it's just a little tall and I want to make sure that it fits in there. And I'm also trying to make sure that all of the name is on the outside and everything. I mean I don't have to cut out this much or I don't have to keep this much of it but it's preferable to me. It's easier when I, when and if I decide to use it in a tutorial and I show it to you guys it's easier for you guys to see the packaging sort of on there uh, what brand it is it's better than me having to repackage it and then just have like a regular label for my label maker it doesn't look as nice so I was just making sure that everything fit in there nicely and I'm popping the center tube back in it just clicks in before I broke the side to make it come out it seems like it was supposed to come out it was just too stiff 
Here is what it looks like now in the container. I absolutely love it. With these vacuum seal or airless vacuum bottles, once you put the top on, you have to pump it a couple of times to get the vacuum moving. So don't freak out if you're pumping and pumping and pumping and nothing comes out. It takes a bit because it's pulling everything up. Next, I'm going to be changing off the spraying heads on my setting spray with the All Star Setting Spray Matte one from ColourPop and the Cover FX Illuminating Setting Spray. I don't like the Cover FX Illuminating Setting Spray because it has glitter in it, but I do like the ColourPop one. So if you look here at the Cover FX Spray, it has the best, most beautiful clear mist, but it has a like glitter in it and I don't like it. It makes flecks on my face. But if you look at the ColourPop sprayer, it's like a fire hose. So I decided I'm going to go ahead and switch the tops out completely. The first thing I'm going to do is take out the little straws because the Cover FX one is just loaded up with the glitter and I don't want to transfer that into the ColourPop bottle. I'm cleaning out the bottom first because I want to try the top to make sure the bottle fits on top. I did this before I even tried looking for any online ones that I could buy because the threading sizes are always different for these bottle tops and it's kind of a pain to get a perfect fit. Now that I know it's going to fit, I'm switching out the straws and I'm going to go ahead and just put this one straight into the Cover FX bottle because I don't really need to test it. I know that I don't like it, the Cover FX spray, and I mean I still have it, I got it in a boxy charm. I'm not going to throw it away. I'll use it, just not as often. It kind of looks cool all in white too. I'm not going to lie. So now I'm putting the straw from the ColourPop into the Cover FX one, or I'm just trying to make sure it sits in there. It's still a little wet, so it is kind of slippery when I shove it in, so I have to be careful that it doesn't bend too much. And now I'm going to go through the process of flushing out all of the old setting spray and the glitter. I'm taking a felt square here with alcohol on it. I'm scrubbing off the glitter from the bottle top and from the inside as well. It's kind of difficult because the glitter in here is just everywhere. Next, I'm taking a little bottle of water and I'm just going to spray this into this napkin. The Cover Effect Setting Spray has a sort of peachy tint to it, I believe because of the glitter, and so I'm just gonna keep spraying until I see it run clear. I did this um, two or three times, I just to get all the everything out, and then that's it. You just switch the tops. It's as simple as that. And now whenever I'm done with this bottle, I will always save this sprayer top just for, you know, saving it and changing it to the sprayer I like. Hopefully I'll be able to find one online that I like as well on the off chance that this one breaks or gets lost and that way I don't have to buy a cover FX setting spray again. Okay, so that's it. Um, I went ahead and I repackaged the All Star Primer, which now I'm really excited for because not only does this have a stop and open lock, it's hard, so nothing's going to squeeze anything out of here that I don't want to get out. If I, I'm going to be able to squeeze out the amount that I exactly want instead of accidentally getting out way more. And you guys even saw when I first opened it to start putting the product in here, it just like kind of like bleh. So this packaging I like much better. I think this was a set of for $10.99. I got two of these and I broke one. That was my fault. I dropped it. I didn't just like drop it. I dropped it, tried to catch it, ended up kicking it. So I dropped, kicked it into the wall and then this thing popped off. So yeah, <laughs> that was the thing that happened. So now I only have one left and I'm gonna have to go online and find a couple other ones. I do have another one that I liked for a foundation that I bought, but this one was one for uh, $12.99 and I can't put the label of anything in here. I just have to kind of like label it myself. And to be honest, I didn't like it as much. Also, if you're gonna buy these, I recommend that if you're gonna buy one and use it for foundation, always use it for foundation. The first couple of pumps with the primer in here ended up pulling out like some leftover foundation that I thought I had managed to clean out, but it's inside the pump mechanism and there was really nothing I could do about that. I didn't have like a cleaning lotion I could just squeeze through 
probably should have done dish soap, but I didn't think about it till it was too late, so oh well. But that's like my recommendation. If you buy these, make sure your lotion one stays for your lotion and your primer and your foundation. That way you don't get any sort of color mixture. Um, now that this has the Cover FX pump on it, which I swear is still just ditching a bunch of glitter, even though I like filtered it really well and it wasn't spraying out, it just still kind of appears to have a lot more glitter. Yes, it is unfortunate because I don't like the look of the black with this bottle. Like, the white just looked a lot nicer, but I'm changing the, the sprayer for something that's even better. I love the color, the Cover FX Illuminating Setting Spray sprayer. It's a nice, beautiful mist, but the setting spray itself always clogs it and also just like releases chunks of glitter on my face that I don't like. I, I never would have bought this on my own. I got this in a boxy charm and it was nice to try it, but I hate that it kind of just sits there on my vanity not getting used. And oddly enough, as I, as I was spraying it with the ColourPop sprayer, I think I kind of like it better for this. It's almost like the fact that this sprayer sprays more is good because then like the glitter that chunks it up ends up becoming like a filter making it finer which is nice so just switching the tops has actually made it better and I will give this a try again maybe it, it'll be better maybe it won't I don't know but who knows maybe I'll end up liking it again or for the first time since I didn't really like it the second time don't follow my logic my brain is just like all right so I've had a few of you ask me questions about this design I did on my wall this is all paint chips. I'm slowly redoing the decor in my room because everything was sort of a hand-me-down and I wanted to slowly get newer stuff, pardon the lighting. So this is my moon frame and as you can see the design continues to the middle. I have to put more up here. I want it to kind of just go down maybe around this portion and go up but I can't seem to find my mounting tape. I have to go buy more. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how I did this going to take a little bit, but I will show you. Alright, so these are the paint chips. You can get these at Walmart in their paint section or at a Home Depot or a Lowe's in their paint section and they are free. All you have to do is stand in front of there and pick all the colors that you want and they don't say anything to you really. The whole time I was picking them up I thought they were going to stop me and be like, hey, what are you doing with that giant stack of paint chips? But nobody seemed to care. This is a hole punch I found off of Amazon for $15.20. And at first I had tried to cut these out myself in the shape of diamonds, but to make this rumbus pattern you have to be fairly exact, and I wasn't able to do that on my own by hand. So I bought the largest rumbus shaped hole punch I could find, and this was honestly the only one I could. You can get at least two out of these particular shaped chips. I found like a longer strip kind by different brands that you can use. But it's really just up to you. It doesn't matter if you, you know, if you want to use just one, that's fine. I also bought this rose gold foil paper from Michaels. Um, I think it was either 79 cents or a dollar. I can't remember, but this is the brand and here is the information on it. I got this glitter rose gold as well, same brand. I also got it at Michaels. It has this beautiful sort of glittery effect to it that I just loved. I found it so gorgeous. I couldn't choose between the two, so I got both. And this is a mounting tape. So it's a double-sided tape, but it has like a little sticker on the back so that you can put it on and just remove it when you're ready to stick it on the wall. As you can see, I've cut a bunch of chips and I've stuck pieces of tape to the back of it. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and start making the shape. I like this design with the rumbus because it looks like little cubes almost. And I'm not doing it in any particular order. I'm just trying not to repeat the same colors next to each other except for the rose gold. And I just, I'm honestly just kind of going with the flow. When I put it on my wall, I didn't have any specific shape or plan in mind. I just wanted it to be kind of organic when I made the shapes together. So this is the basic idea of how you would mount them to the wall. 
what I did is I sorted them out in piles of three that I picked the colors are like individually and I set them up in like little blocks of three and then I put them on a tray and that way when I was on my ladder applying them to my wall I had a bunch of them sort of pre-assembled. Okay, so that was random thing number two. And then the last bit of random thing, I always get compliments on my hair. <laughs> I honestly, I'm so surprised everybody likes it. I mean, I'm not saying that I don't like it. I just, I've never had my hair this short before. Uh, when I was younger, my father would not allow me and my sister to cut our hair. So we had really, really long hair and he would always say that we weren't allowed to cut our hair till we turned 18 years old, which gag me please that was like the dumbest rule I've ever heard of you try taking care of four feet of hair when you're only three feet tall but anyways that's a whole other thing <laughs> but um so I cut my hair uh, mainly because if you guys look at my thumb or not my thumbnail my profile picture on my YouTube channel I have gray hair a beautiful beautiful gray hair that I took forever to get just right because my hair is super dark naturally as you can see it's like the pitch black of space and it takes a lot of bleaching to get that color because the gray doesn't stick on very well it's a whole thing but basically what ended up happening was I had maybe three or four months with the most beautiful gray hair ever and then it started to fall out so that's why I had to cut it and so I've been like working my way back to growing out my hair and it's so weird like it looks really great to me in these curls which is my natural curl but I tried straightening it out the other day and I swear to you it was like 1972 like this shag hairdo it was bad I never want to see that again I was like all right looks like I'm keeping it curly till the foreseeable future so what I mainly do is after I wash my hair I found this amazing product at Marshall's because you know I don't buy things full price if I don't have to this is the nutrient-rich coconut oil curl cream by natural oleology beauty oils and it just defines and enhances waves detangles uh, conditions it reduces frizz and it's paraben free and I bought this bottle for $6.99 and I went back to buy another one and it was like $5.99 so I guess they can't make up their price they, you know it's fairly cheap and what I love about it is it's exactly what it says it's a curl cream it's not oil it's not spray so I don't get like crunchiness from whatever I put in here it's just natural and soft and I don't get any of those like spray flakes that some people get I hate that and so what I do is I wash my hair and then while it's still damp I go ahead and I put a bunch of it says to do like one to two pumps but I have very thick hair they even charge me more at the salon to cut it so I actually put like four pumps here and I just comb it through my hair and then I let it dry naturally and that's how my curls they look super nice and the thing is I haven't had my curls look like this since I was a little girl and I, I didn't start dyeing my hair till I was like 18 so before then it was a struggle to get my curls to cooperate with me and look good and I wish I had found this while I was in high school because I had the frizziest hair and now it's like great well at least I found it now right so usually what I do is if I see it's getting a little bit frizzy or a little bit, you know, messy from like the curls being brushed because I run my fingers through my hair all the time, I just have this little spray bottle I bought at Publix and I filled it with distilled water. Um, I have to have distilled water at my house because I have well water and it smells like eggs. So I have distilled water for cooking and all kinds of stuff. So I just take this and I, I spray it in my hair just to wet it and refresh it a bit. Da, da, da. Then I just take a little bit of the cream, warm it up in my hands, and just kind of run it through and flatten it out. And what I usually do, because I have these bits of curls here that are still sort of destroyed from the dye, they frizz more than they should, so I kind of just really focus on getting some cream in that area. And like you can see the difference in curl in the hair that's bleached and the hair that's not. And trust me, I'm not saying I'm not going to dye my hair again because I love to put different colors in. It's like my favorite thing to do 
but the gray was so beautiful and I wanted it for so long. I kid you not, as a kid I always wanted to have like shock of white hair. Don't ask me why, I just wanted that. And um, basically what I'm planning on doing is growing it out, cutting out all the dead hair, and then once I have it to a decent length, I will go back to dyeing my hair other colors. Probably not the full head of hair so I don't have to go through this again, but definitely gonna go do it again. But anyways, so that's like the last random thing I had to show you guys. So that's it. That's all I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye.